Hi everyone, it's Laura. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to do something a little different. And what you're seeing is one half of this necklace that we're going to use, do. This is going to be kind of a gothic romance necklace. This is a bargain bead box tutorial. Strictly bargain bead box. The only thing not bargain bead box is going to be my clasp. Uh, the, um, and the, uh, the um, clamshell, which uh, is from my stash, the thread, which is coming from um, Art Beads, which we're using the 1G, and it is, um, they don't say the color of it, do they? Um, no, they do not, but it is um, 300, and you can see on the back, it's 100% nylon, which is great for bead weaving. Now, I don't want anybody to get um, all kinds of up in the air um, because it is very simple. Before we get into this too far, my, um, my code for Bargain Bead Box is all capitals, Dragonfly with a number two at the very end. Um, and my links and everything is down below. That code will save you $2 off your first month subscription to Bargain Bead Box, which is $23 shipped directly to your door every month. And you get beautiful beads such as these. Um, and if it will let me edit, um, because this is going to be a fairly long video, uh, it'll be on the screen. If not, it won't be. What we're going to be using is a 10 millimeter Malaysia J dyed quartz. Um, and we're pretty much using almost every one that was on the strand. We're gonna have a, like a few left over, not very many. Um, and now we're going to be using the four millimeter crystal faceted round beads. And we are using almost every one of those also in this piece. And now we're going to use the uh, brass faceted teardrop pendant with a Malaysia jade. It is absolutely beautiful. And then we are going to be using, and I don't know what I did with my little baggie. I guess I set them aside. <laughs> um, we're going to be using the garnets and I'm not going to have any left. Um, I've used them in another project. They are, I believe three millimeter garnets or two millimeter. They might be two millimeter, but I think they were three. And when I'm done, there's going to be none left. So um, this is the part that panics everybody and you should not panic. This is all bead weaving. Um, and I also have one uh, little 11-0 uh, seed bead um, that's going to go into the uh, end of the clamshell. We are also using three of the, no, let me find them because I set them aside. Oops, I picked up the wrong bag. Three of the seven by four flower spacer beads um, up in the upper part. This is going to be kind of a choker style. I am putting chain on it and that is simply because I want people to be able to wear this um, regardless of how big their neck is and I lost my, there we are. So this is going to be six um seven and a half so 15 inches around so that's going to leave me about two inches that'll give me um 17 inches of that will have um so i'll be putting two inches of chain plus it will have a nice long um extra piece so that it can be made, you know, extension. This is very simple. Everybody panics. I'm going to be using a wingspan plus. You want to make sure you have plenty. You really don't want to have to add on. I save my bits to use if I'm going to be making earrings and things like that. Um, so I don't throw them away. We're going to set this aside off to the side here so that we can look at this. Um, we will be connecting on to the other side of this when we get to that point. But um, you will be using two. These are size 10 beading needles. Like I said, I have about a wingspan and a half of beading of the 1G 
uh, beading thread and I've loaded it onto both needles, one on each half. And I want to try to get these so that the ends are even. And in order to do that, just grab the end that is uh, shorter, give it a slight tug, hold again. And you want your needles to be fairly close to be in the same uh, length. It's really close. I'm not going to worry about the rest of that. And you want to stretch your thread because this thread will give. And if you don't, run it through your fingers so that you can stretch it. It may stretch on your project down the line and have some give. And that won't look very pretty. So now that I have it stretched and I want my e uh, needles even for this part. So I'm going to have a left needle and a right needle. And everybody panics about doing this. It's so easy. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my clamshell. So this is where we're going to start. We're first going to pick up um, the seed bead. And now we're going to go through the mouth of the clamshell. And we're going to bring the seed bead and clamshell both down to the very end. We're going to hold both our left and right together, but not too close because we do want to know which one's left and which one's right at this point. And we're going to bring them both down to the end, keeping our left and right separate so that this is going to be like so. And what we're going to do is now take our left. We're also going to put it down through just the mouth of the clamshell, not the seed bead. And that creates the very end and it comes out the bottom. Now we're going to pick this up, hold them together. And I want to, whoops, that one is really, really short again. And what I want to do is make sure that this is somewhere very near the very middle, which it is, and that is good. Now, with these two needles side by side, we're going to start threading on this section here. And we're going to start with what's closest to the clamshell, which is two of the... Um, so I can tell you exactly which ones I'm using. The 6x4 Malaysia Jade. So we're going to start with two of those. We're just going to put them on both needles. And if you do this with any beads, make sure you can put two needles in through. If you can't, put one through and then put the other needle through. But all the beads, you want to be able to pass through them at least uh, two or three times and you'll see why in a minute then comes one of the spacers and then we have two more of the six by four Malaysia Jade and then we have another gold spacer I'm going to drop them down out of our way so we have room on our needle. Three more of these jades. One, two, three. Now, if you're wondering why I'm not using any um, of the B caps, is they have a tendency to have a, because they're thin, they have a uh, sharper edge and it will have more of a tendency to wear and cut the thread. And then we're going to add a 10 millimeter of the Malaysia Jade. I love these beads. Three more of the small Malaysia Jade. Three. Drop them all down out of our way. So we've got this and these. And then we're going to need one more of the gold flower spacers and three 
because this is actually part of our design. We're going to add three of the six by four Malaysia Jade, just like that. And we're going to drop this all down so that we have, and if you want to make sure you want to turn your work so that you can check and make sure that it matches. And we're going to bring these all the way down to our very end, lay it up next to it, and you'll be able to tell if it matches, and it does. So this is where we're going to separate left needle, right needle. And you kind of want to look here and kind of let it dangle, lay it down, and this is where you want to untangle your needles. So you have left and right. Here's my right. There's my left. All right. So our pattern here, as you can see, goes on each needle. We're going to need one of the, I believe these are the three millimeter garnets. So we're going to use a garnet a jade, a garnet, a jade, a garnet, a jade, and a garnet. And so we're going to load that. These are really kind of hard. I want to make sure you can see them on the screen. Get them a little closer for us. So they have a tendency to be hard to chase. So we have a garnet, a jade, garnet, just take your time, a jade, a garnet, a jade, and a garnet. Like that. So that's what you're going to load onto each one of these on left and right. So this is my right side. I'm just going to drop them down so that they're there like that. I'm going to grab my left needle and load it the same way. I can see the hole in that one. Garnet, jade, Garnet, Jade, Garnet, Jade, Garnet. Again, we have the same pattern. We're going to drop that down and it's going to come out that side. Set our left needle on the left side, our right needle's on the right side. We're gonna grab a 10 millimeter. We're gonna take our right needle. We're gonna go through from the right to the left. And we're gonna pull it through and we're gonna set that right needle on the left side up out of our way. We're gonna grab our left needle, just so you can see this, just like that. And we're gonna take and go from our left side through the same hole where there's only, you know, the one way you can go through these beads, we're going to go from the left side through the right side, crossing through that bead like in an X figure. We're going to drop that left needle onto the right side. It now becomes the right needle. The right needle now becomes the left. And we're going to just draw this down. So that thread is now crisscrossing through. I'm going to get this out of our way because we don't need to refer to it anymore. So this is now what you have. Okay, let's set this out of our way so we're not getting caught up in it. And we're going to repeat that pattern. I'm going to get some more of these down here, some more of these over here. And now our left needle has become our right. So we're going to go ahead and take our right needle, get my finger down here, and, and of course it depends on what size uh, beads you use, how many you would need. Etc. So we need a garnet, a jade, garnet, jade, garnet, 
Now I saw the hole and it disappeared. Garnet. Jade. One more garnet for to complete this section. Sometimes you think you've got the hole and it's not the hole there. So we have our garnet jade, garnet jade, garnet. So you have three and four. Drop them down. Set our needle off to the side. Repeat for this one. Garnet, jade, garnet, jade, garnet. Jade. Come on, I just need one more garnet. So this took um, 40 of the 6x4 um, jade, the Malaysia jade, per side. So we're going to draw them all the way down to the piece. So it pretty much used the entire strand. And now again, we're going to take a 10 millimeter, get these out of our way. Again, pick it up with the right. And I'll leave the needles in this time so you could see what I've done. Like that. And then take the left and you're going to crisscross them in like that. So you can see what I've done. Okay. And that's all you're doing. You're crisscrossing the thread inside. So now your right needle is over here. Your left needle is over here. They've changed sides. And now have become, the left has become the right and the right has become the left. Pull them nice and snug. You want all this to be snug. And then we're going to repeat. out of our way. Double check everything, snug everything, make sure everything looks even. Now this is what we're going to do. Um, as you can see here, we take and put one garnet and one jade and then we're going to add that after we do that. So we're picking up one garnet and one jade on each thread. One garnet, one jade, dropping it down. On the right, one garnet, one jade, dropping it down on the left. I'm going to turn my piece so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm also going to put my left needle to the top, my right needle on the bottom, um, just so you can see what we're going to do next. I'm getting my other side of my piece over here because we're going to start connecting. I'm going to zoom you in a little bit if this will let me. Cool. All right, now I'm going to drag this down so we're in frame a little better. Okay. So we're going to tighten these up. Remember, my left thread is at the top, my right thread is at the bottom. So this is left, this is right. And I'm going to pick up with, I always pick up first with the right, so let's continue doing that. So you're going to pick up this last lowly little jade with your right thread, and you're going to put your right thread on the left side. You're going to go through just like we would if it was a 10 millimeter. I'm going to go through that jade from the left to the right with your left thread, putting your left thread on the right side. And we're gonna draw all this down. Now we're done with these. These need to be out of the way. And more than I needed out, which almost makes me nervous, but I know I had more out, so I need not panic. 
So that's how that's going to look. And then we're going to get our pendant over here. I'm going to take my now left thread. I'm making sure that I have plenty of room between that and my tail. And I'm going to come up from the bottom of it and I'm going to pull it through. I'm going to snug all this and my thread from this one is coming through the bottom of that bead. So when I snug it, I want to go from that pendant through from the top out the bottom of that bead, grabbing my needle and pulling it through, making sure I'm not catching on everything. So mind your thread. And then I want to snug everything. So I'm pulling on both threads. I'm going to come up from the bottom and I'm going to do it again. And I'm probably going to do this three times because I want this to be nice and snug. Up from the bottom. Pulling on this both right here. So this is snug. I'm going to come from the top of that bead. This is why I'm using a matching color because at this point you're going to see that thread but you're not going to see a lot of it. Through that thread, that bead, the last one we put on that's working as our anchor, and we're going to snug everything again. And I'm going to do it one more time. Again, we're working with the right one, so we're coming up. Actually, that is pretty snug. So we're going to stop right there. We're just going to do it twice. Now we're going to grab our left one and I'm going to pick it up for this because my left thread is not still loose. See how loose that left thread was? We're going to go from the, see it's coming out the top of this bead. We're going to go down through from the top of that um, pendant out the back and grab that thread, that needle from behind my fingers and pull it through, minding where our thread is, giving it a tug. Now I can lay it down because I've got a hold on my needle. And that thread is coming out from the top of this bead right here. So we're going to come through the bottom of the bead Oops, let me double check that. Nope, that's one, that one. So we're going to need to go, because we're coming from underneath. So we're going to go from the back side because we're under our piece, working under our piece instead of on top of it. We're going to come from the bottom and go up through the top of the bead. Remember, our thread is underneath our um, piece right now, what we're working on. So minding where that thread is, pull it all snug, pull with both pieces, go down through our pendant. I've lifted my finger here because now things are a little more snug. Get our thread out of our way, pull it through. Remember this is all underneath now, so we're going to need to come under with our thread, go from this side of that bead go through it and we're going to pull our thread out get our finger out of it it's easier once you get it there to lay it down and snug everything so we have our left thread and our right thread now we're going to turn our piece and our threads are going to change position our left thread has become our right piece and our right thread has become our left one and now we need to bead all the way back, a thread, weave all the way back up through to the very end of this. It's very easy. It's not complicated. And this is what tightens and strengthens our piece. So we're going to hold our pendant. Let me get this up out of our way. We're going to hold our pendant. 
and you do not want to miss a bead. If you miss a bead, it's going to flop and you're going to see the thread. So this is the bead that we're coming out of with our right, what is now our right thread. So because we're coming out of it, we want to keep on going with that thread path. So we're coming out here. So we're going to go in through the next bead and we're going to go through the um, garnet. And we're going to snug. I'm going to go through from the right to the left and I'm going to snug. At this point, I'm going to put that one down. I'm going to pick up my left thread, which is coming out. I'm going to get that off my finger, which is coming out this side. And we're going to come up through this uh, six by four jade. Remember, these are all kind of loosey goosey into that garnet. And I'm going to get my hand out of there, pick it back up, make sure it's not catching on anything, give it a nice tug, go from left to right. I may have said that wrong on the other one, but, and then pull and tug. So there is that. Once we're at this point, we know that we have this tightened and we can just bead weave our way up through the piece with one needle at a time. So we're coming out this um, bead here with our right thread. And we're just going to follow this bead path. So we're going to go through here. And if you can only catch just so many beads at a time, then do so. Like I know I've got those safely. I'm going to come through those. Get my thread out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. I did not catch this bead. Go up through. If you can only get one, then get just one. You want to make sure you do not miss a bead. Get this garnet that I missed. And he may get persnickety. You may have to like bend your beads out of the way, you know, like say, hey, I need to get in there. Take and move it a little bit. Just like that. When you're at these where the big beads are, make sure you go through them to the other side and go up the other side. Make sure you remember to crisscross or it won't snug up. Make sure you snug that. And I'm coming out of this bead. And I just want to keep on going. Make sure that you keep your eye on your thread. Don't let your thread wrap around something um, because it's this is one piece of thread, guys, with no knots. Um, and if you make a mistake, you have to pretty much uh, go back to square one or try to figure out where you can go back to with your whole piece and create a knot and start from that point. And it uh, can be pretty discouraging. So you always want to mind your thread. Make sure you're not looping over something that you shouldn't be, um, make sure you cross over just like that. Go up. I want to make sure I'm still filming and still in frame. Go up, not missing any. If you pick up and you do this and you see that you have all your, um, beads on your needle, you know, you haven't missed any. I love this piece. It's going to be very hard to sell it. So pick that up, go in here. Go across. And you can see how I'm not picking him up. He doesn't want to get picked up right then. So we will miss him. Come back. Yeti. He just didn't want to go on that time. So that's okay. Like this one's not wanting to line up either. There he goes. Now, I am where we added on this one piece, and we're just going to go straight up through everything. So we're going to go right up through every bead, all the way up to the end. Make sure you don't miss anything. 
Make sure you don't grab something you shouldn't. Make sure your loops don't loop around anything. Double check everything. Get that other thread out of my way for a moment. All right, when you get up to this very last little bit and you're going to come to your clamshell, go up into your clamshell, but um, uh, go ahead and go through, well, try not to go through the, yeah, well, I guess it really doesn't matter with this one. You want one to go through your bead, but not both. And that's because we're going to use that bead to tie off with. So I have this thread going through the bead. When I bring the next thread up through, I don't want it to go through that seed bead. So I'm down here. I'll make sure I'm not wrapped around, and I kind of am, so I'm going to fix this. I'm going to find my thread. There we go. And my thread is coming out this side. That's why. Okay. Got my thread. It is coming out this side. So I need to go up through here. And if you ever wonder where you've left off, if you look between your beads, you could tell that it's only got one piece of thread right there and you'll know where you haven't gone through. So this side, this piece of thread will actually go through the opposite direction of your thread that you just went up through with. So I will probably fast forward this thread. Okay, <clears throat> we're at the very end. I'm going to go through the bottom of the clamshell. I'm going to try not to go through the seed beads. I'm going to hold the clamshell. I'm going to go up through it. Find the hole. And yes, I avoided the seed bead. Okay, the reason I'm doing that is I want to use that seed bead as my anchor. I'm going to go ahead and take my needles off. And yes, I had used quite a bit more than I needed to, but I would rather have plenty than not enough. Okay, I'm going to go back through, double check how this looks. It is so amazing and beautiful. I love it. Okay, now we're up here and we're going to go ahead and tie this. I'm going to do at first just an overhand knot. You want to make sure when you draw this down, not to catch around the outside edges of your beads or your clamshell. Now we're going to do a surgeon's knot. So we're going to go around it twice, once, twice. I don't know how that happened, but I pulled it right on out. I guess I kind of like... Um, undid my knot once, twice. Sorry, I think I was out of screen, guys. Make sure you pull that down. Do not catch your clamshell in your thread like I did right there. Um, gently pull it down. I'm going to rest it so my clamshell doesn't have any tension against my thread. Okay. I'm going to do another knot and I have some glue here. I will put glue in those holes also. 
I'm going to do one more knot, another surgeon's knot. I want this to hold. Make sure I'm not wrapped around my clamshell. Gently pull this down. But I'm not going to knot it all the way down until I make sure I'm inside the clamshell, which I am. Tug it. I'm going to get my glue out. One of these is open. Strings off. I will reuse that thread for other projects. I'm going to put some glue in my clamshell. Don't be afraid of it. Put plenty in there. I'm going to close it. And the reason I use the 11 O's is because they fit so nicely inside of there. And my other pliers are in side. So Gently squeeze this because that is glass in there. So we're just going to line that all up. Lay this out. That is so pretty. And then I'm going to do the same with this one. Lots of glue in there. Bring this around gently. I'll do it with my fingers. Line that up, and we will let that start to dry. That piece is gorgeous. Let me zoom you back out. Oops, wrong way, guys. Sorry. That piece is gorgeous. I'm going to get the glue out of our way so we don't stick anything in it, like a needle, and glue it shut. Now, I'm going to go ahead and measure this. Just a smidge under, it's about 15 and a half inches, just like I, whoops, thought it was. Sorry about that. I did it again. So we need, uh, I don't see my big boy cutters. So let's use my old cutters and cut off 15 and a half inches. So let's cut off 16 and a half, 17. Let's start with. Um, most people are going to want this to be, so let's start with a two, little less than two inch. Because most people are going to want this right up close to their neck. And then let's add, um, let's put this together first and see, um, goodness, these do not like to open. Get some of these jump rings out. And one of these clasps. I really like these clasps. All right, let's go ahead. And I need a jump ring. And I don't have my actual regular pliers in here. So we're just going to go with what we've got. I have had these since I started jewelry making over like almost 10 years ago now. That's how long I've had them. And yes, I will trim all of the red uh, string away and then we're going to close that like so and then on this end we'll get what I just do that little little bitty piece and then I'm going to remeasure because that should put it probably a little longer than I want 15 and a half, that's going to make it 16. So yeah, that's going to make it a little longer than 18 inches. But there's a trick. I need some bigger jump rings for the clasping. And I'll show you what we're going to do because this is a choker style. And when you make a choker style, but, you know, not everybody has a 17-inch um, neck or an 18-inch neck. You know, um, you want to make it so that it's available for other people to wear, not just one. So there is one. 
And then we're going to put another jump ring in for a closure right about halfway. So let's go right there. So let's open this, put it right there. I absolutely love this piece. And guys, I will be putting this on a form so that you could see how it looks. Um, there will be pictures in the community on my um, YouTube page or Facebook page. There will also be pictures um, of it on the thumbnail. This is so gorgeous. I almost don't want to part with it. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you learned how to do this so that you can do it. Lay things out, kind of plan ahead of time. Make sure your needles and thread will pass through whatever beads you have more than one time so that uh, it makes the piece look very beautiful. And um, yeah, I love it. So thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I love each and every one of you. And again, all of my socials will be down below. And I'll talk to all of you guys down in the comments. Bye guys.